And we have a beautiful weather day in store this morning. This is the live look at the district at the nation's capital as that sun is getting ready to peak on this Wednesday morning. Perfect conditions for jogging, unless you're Tanaya. Unless or you're me. <laughs> some coffee outside. Good morning to you. Thanks so much for starting your day with us. I'm Corey James. Yes, maybe taking your dog out for a walk yes. or your new kitten that you get. <laughs> I'm Tanaya, right? <laughs> Shanika Grimshaw is keeping an eye on the roads for us. But first, we do want to get to meteorologist Jack. Meteorologist, I can say that, I promise. Jackie Layer with a check on your forecast. Good morning. Good morning, Corey and Tanaya and Shanika. We are talking about a bit of a cool start out there. So, yes, if you're stepping outside, taking the dog or the cat for a walk, like Tanaya just mentioned, we'll see this temperatures right now. 55 in Frederick, 59 right now in Leesburg. It is 60 in Manassas, 63 in Fredericksburg, 66 right now in DC. So, DC a little bit warmer than the surrounding suburbs. So, we're seeing those dew points. It is quite comfortable out there. You'll certainly also notice that as well as you step out the door. The radar is all clear, so you don't need to worry. About bringing the umbrella. Showers, we're not seeing any of those to kick off your Wednesday morning, unlike yesterday or the day before. So this morning, it's a dry start. However, later on this afternoon, count that chance for an isolated thunderstorm to pop up. So just keep your eyes to the skies. It'll be quick moving, and those will slide out eventually. And any rain or thunderstorm threat moves out. Right, right around sunset, right around 8 p.m. this evening. We're seeing reduced visibility, out, especially out towards Luray, where we're down to four miles of visibility. Five in Frederick, nine in Martinsburg. So a few areas of some patchy fog out there as you're stepping out the door. For the school bus forecast for those kids heading back to school today, we're going to be seeing those temperatures varying into low to mid 60s for the morning under partly cloudy skies once that sun does rise. I'll have more details and timing of those isolated thunderstorms coming up right now. Toss it over Shanika with the very latest on traffic. How's it looking at the six o'clock hour? Oh, it's looking okay. We're looking at Frederick County, I-70 East at 270 as the sun is coming up and you're getting ready to head to work or school. Happy back to school day. So let's move on to the max. We do have one issue. Now this is in Iamsville. This is right off of Green Valley Road north before Price Road. Do be careful as you're traveling out. That could slow you down, especially if they shut those roads down. So over to oh, Northwest, we didn't have fire activity going on, and you know, hopefully that did clear. Frederick through Middletown though looks good. 70 east and west, and 15 north and southbound. You're all green, so that is a good thing. Back to Northwest, Crittenden Street is where that fire happened. North east. And that's off of 10th and 12th Street. So that fire again happened in Northeast. All right, over to you guys. Thank you, Shanika. Well, it's back to school for Frederick County, Maryland students. Yeah, Frederick County Public Schools is opening its doors today for more than 45,000 students. And to get them all excited for the first day back to school, the district created a mock motion picture. We will. We will. We will. Together. 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 Every child. Every day. If that doesn't get you ready, I don't know what will. Back to school night for parents and students will take place later this month. This has been a project that we're all, we've all been looking forward to for years and years. Um, I think we're all really excited to have such accessibility to D.C. because it is such um, a really cool and enriching city. It definitely is. Well, happening today, making sure everything is on track before the trains hit the tracks. Morning commuters are really excited about the opening of the Silver Line extension. Law enforcement and first responders will lead an emergency response preparedness drill at the Ashburn Metro stop today. Our Joseph Omo there live this morning. So, Joseph, what should people expect to hear and see when this drill gets underway? Uh, Tonight, uh, lots of sirens, lots of police officers, lots of first responders, but zero emergencies. It's all just going to be a simulation. This is the Ashburn station right now. There's the uh, emergency exercise in progress. Little placard here, letting people know that something's going to be happening today. Of course, the gates are closed here at the Ashburn station, and they have been for a while. I'm going to ask my camera guy John here to come over and show the Metro Transit police officers that are slowly starting to file in and get ready for this drill. You know, Metro officials they want the silver line extension up and running by the end of the year. We still don't have an exact date.
But what's set to happen at the new Ashburn station later on today could play a big role in finally catapulting that Silver Line extension into service. All right, so Ashburn, of course, is one of those six new stations that is going to be opening up. You're looking at a video right now from Metro. Take a look at this one. It shows all of the new stations Reston Town Center, Herndon, Innovation Center, Dulles Loudon, excuse me, Dulles Loudon Gateway, and finally Ashburn. You got to remember here, all of these stations are fully built. Here's some pictures of them. But just because they're built doesn't mean they are ready to open. You know, Metro officials have made it clear that there needs to be extensive testing and training done to make sure that everybody who's going to work here knows what they're doing. So that is what's happening today. Metro, along with several law enforcement agencies here in Virginia, we're talking Loudoun County, Fairfax County, they are going to be running what they're calling a full-scale emergency drill. Pretty much simulating a real life scenario of a stranded train just outside of the station. Essentially, this will just give all these first responders a chance to get to know the station and what to do if one of these emergencies plays out in real life. And guys, listen, this is going to be a very long drill. It's set to start at 8 o'clock this morning and end at 12 noon. If you are in the Ashburn, Virginia area, expect to see over 100 first responders. This is going to look like a big scene, but guess what? It's all a false alarm. It is a simulation. There won't be a true emergency. The question now, Corey, is how many more tests of like this are we going to have to go through until the Silver Line actually opens? All right, here as many Ashburn, I'm Joseph Omo, DC News Now. Okay, thanks so much, Joseph. All right, brand new video to our news from this morning. Firefighters heading into a burning home in Northeast DC. This was along the scene of Crittenden Street overnight. Those flames tore through parts of two floors of this row home. The firefighters out there put out the flames, and the good news is no one was hurt. Investigators now working to figure out what sparked this place. Your time right now is 6.06. .06. New this morning, Rudy Giuliani is scheduled to testify today in a courtroom in Atlanta. The closed-door hearing is all part of the investigation into former President Donald Trump and his attempt to overturn the 2020 election results in Georgia. Now, Giuliani was the personal attorney for Trump and the lead attorney on his 2020 campaign. Your time right now is 6.07. This morning, Wyoming Congresswoman Liz Cheney is conceding to her Trump-backed challenger. The state's Republican primary swayed in the direction of newcomer Harriet Hageman. In Cheney's concession speech last night, she told people she has no plans of backing down. We must be very clear-eyed about the threat we face and about what is required to defeat it. I have said since January 6th, that I will do whatever it takes to ensure Donald Trump is never again anywhere near the Oval Office. And I mean it. And Hageman was able to pull ahead by 30 points, but the polls predicted that she would win by a considerable margin in this race. And this morning, Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski is moving on after securing a spot on the ballot in November's general election. Alaska's new ranked choice voting system puts the top four primary candidates on the fall ballot. Murkowski and Trump-backed Kelly Shibaka are two Republicans to advance. The two other slots have not been decided. And sticking with Alaska, the state's former governor and 2008 vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin is pushing forward in her plans to return to the nation's capital. Palin, along with two other candidates, are moving on to the general election to fill Alaska's lone seat in the House. Congressman Don Young died earlier this year, leaving his seat open for the first time in almost 50 years. Time right now is 6.08. Happening today, keeping guns off the streets. Montgomery County officials are hosting a news conference to announce details of a gun buyback event. Now, this is going to be held at 1 o'clock at the Rockville Police Department. Rockville Police, the Montgomery County State Attorney, and Montgomery County Public Schools are leading that news conference. The actual gun buyback event, well, that will be held on August 27th. And Rockville City Police say crimes against people have actually jumped 25% between 2020 and 2021. There were 528 of those crimes reported last year. However, crimes against property went down by 1%, and crimes against society are down by 26%. Here's right now on this Wednesday morning, 6.09. Developing now, monkeypox is now a concern for pets. Health officials are warning everyone after a dog in France caught the virus. DC News Now's Lex Juarez is in studio this morning with these details. Good morning, Lex.
Oh, good morning, Corey. Yeah, that report from France came out last week, but the CDC has been warning infected people to stay away from their pets for months. The dog, an Italian greyhound, had lesions on its skin and tested positive for the virus after its owners caught the virus. The owners told reporters that they do sleep beside the dog at night. Rodents and other wild animals have also been infected with monkeypox. But this is the first case that has been reported in a domesticated animal. Now, pet owners in the area might have their concerns. Well, there are two opportunities for people to ask questions and learn more about the virus. This Friday, DC Health is hosting a Twitter chat at 2 in the afternoon. People can follow along by following at underscore DC Health, and they can also use the hashtag PreventMonkeyPoxDC. Well, Montgomery County health officials are also holding a virtual town hall, and that will be on Monday evening at 6 o'clock. This will be the first in a series of meetings that residents can tune in for. Council Vice President Evan Glass and county health officials will be hosting and answering questions. This town hall for the first of the series will have a focus on the LGBTQ community. Now, if you know or suspect that your pet has come into contact with a symptomatic person, the CDC says to keep them at home and away from other animals for 21 days. Live in the studio, Lex Suarez, VC News Now.